Hi everyone, are you here? We are going to start right now. So uh, could you please put something in the chat like plus if you hear me and see me well. And uh, okay, amazing, amazing. Hi guys, nice to see you here with in this webinar. So uh, we are around 20 people for the moment and I guess uh, some more people will be joining during the next minutes. Amazing. Yeah, I see that a lot of people are here. Great. So hi, hi, hi again. My name is Nadia and um, I'm going to talk with you today about uh, two topics which are very much connected uh, about the um, study in Moscow in the High School of Economics at the Master Program Prototype in Future Cities and how to win a scholarship and discounts to the tuition fee to study at this specific program. So I hope that today um, we are with, uh, with you, the group of people who are interested uh, to participate in this program and uh, you are the people who are interested to win this scholarship and to participate in the competition that we are going to discuss. So let's start. Uh, as I told already, my name is Nadia and I guess that with, with some of you we've already met maybe in our previous previous webinar. So say hi to those with whom we already met at the previous webinars, because I guess there are some people, maybe a couple of people who already visited our previous webinars. If yes, just put hi or something. Yeah, hi School of Economics, hi. <laughs> Danila, Nina, amazing, yeah. So then you've already seen me um, and I'm the curator of the International Master Program Prototype in Future City. That's why I always communicate with our applicants, with our students. I love to do this and that's why um, in case you're going to be our student, uh, you're going to meet with me a lot. Uh, but more than this, I'm also managing the International Laboratory for Experimental Urban Design in the High School of Economics, which is uh, maybe known for you as Shukhov Lab. And also I'm teaching um, at this master program at the course Reading on Urbanity. So I uh, fix lots of roles inside of the program. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, or maybe you've noticed in case you are uh, applying to this program, uh, master program is released in the High School of Economics, which is the national research university and one of the leading universities in Russia at the moment, uh, with the most, uh, I would say, advanced um, methodologies of education, research, uh, and uh, this, re uh, this university uh, can, in these universities at the moment study more than 40,000 students in four different cities in Russia, in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, in Nizhny Novgorod and in Perm. And uh, we have around 7,000 lecturers, researchers and professors. And uh, we have this quite open and mixed uh, and transparent environment, educational and research processes. So you can uh, go to the HEC website, the main page you can see now at the screen, in case you are interested to learn more about the universities. But we are not going uh, to discuss it uh, deep, deeper today. Uh, we are going mostly to talk about the master program, uh, master program curriculums, uh, some peculiarities of this program, and also about how to win the scholarship itself to study at the program. So uh, before we go on, um, with some of you who already met, but as usually we are always asking this question at our webinars, like who are you, why you came to this webinar, and we are really interested to know from which countries people are coming, what is your specialization and why you apply for the program. So I have the three main topics, um, questions to you. Uh, could you please answer like briefly in a chat, like what is your current specialization? Where are you from? And are you going to apply for master? Because uh, this also, uh, this is also interesting for us to know like why you came to this webinar and uh, what is your goal here? So um, if you can, please chat something in the chat. Um, and after this, we are going to continue our discussion already based on your, um, on your answers. We always put this question. Sorry, guys, those who already <laughs> did it maybe a couple or maybe three times. <laughs> Sorry for that. But um, every time we have new people, that's why uh, yeah, we have to do this. And uh, we, we are really interested to know from where you are. So guys, please chat where, where are you from? Uh, what is your specialization? And if you're applying to master or not, or you just came to, 
to to learn more about what is going on here so vince from philippines hi nice to meet you architecture graduate and currently taking up masters in environmental planning amazing uh, uh right uh, from iraq baghdad study preparation course of russian language and want to study master degree in hc previous study in translation amazing the new interface designer developer moscow yes okay <laughs> very brief good amazing so maybe a couple of guys more will answer the question nina from netherlands work in economic policy for city government already submitted my application for the program amazing uh, emmanuel from nigeria great so we have a really interesting geography today from different parts of the world so uh, architect india yes amazing Elsa from Brazil, work on the environmental issues focused on communications, marketing. I'm willing to know more about the program. Good. Um, I will tell more today. Architecture, Syria. Yes, I will enroll. Bilal, I think we already even have uh, some communication with you. Nice to see you here. I also see Nishrat. Uh, yeah, so I, I remember that you already also applied for the program. Uh, Maria, oil and gas from Uzbekistan, but for nine years. Uh, I lost the message, but for nine years I'm living in Moscow and planning to apply as heard much about the organization, decided to try. Amazing. Daniel from Moscow, marketing, yes, of course, great. Pawan from India, civil engineer, came to this webinar to learn more about the master's degree in the institution. I think it's very innovative, thanks. So, yeah. Architect from Syria uh, and seeing a career in urbanism, amazing. Ishrat uh, from Pakistan to mobile competition. Okay, so the messages are disappearing. Mm -mm -mm. So Emmanuel from Nigeria interested in bachelors. As far as I understand, we are going to talk mostly about master program today. We are not going to cover bachelor's program. Nur, uh, architect from Syria, applying for prototyping future cities. Great. Sarah from Iran, I'm a high school graded in graphic design. Good, maybe hopefully in the future you will be one of our students. Architecture, Aidar Kazani, State University, applying for studying urban design, amazing. Lixi, graduated from Bachelor of Urban Planning from China, and I'm planning to apply for this program. Amazing, guys. This is super cool because I see this geography, different people from Asia, Africa, from Europe, from all over the Russia. So this is super great. I'm really happy to see you here and let's continue. So um, my first part of the presentation will be mostly dedicated to the master program itself. And I really encourage you to ask questions in case you have any questions connected with the program in the chat. And I will try to answer them um, in the end of this part of the presentation. So once you have any question, please put a chat immediately and we will check it later. So what is going on at the master prototype in Future Cities? Why it's so innovative and why we will be really happy to see you from different parts of the world with so many different backgrounds at the program. Um, let's see. First, uh, the curriculum of the program itself. Um, if you check the website and if you've been to our uh, open days um, and many presentations and many webinars that we are doing regularly, you have seen already this graphic. Um, and this is uh, the main representation of the program curriculum. So this is a two-year master program, which covers 120 credits, which a lot, but which is like classical amount of credits for the master programs. And we study in four semesters. And every semester we have a new discipline, but the disciplines are divided into five main layers. Uh, and the layers are technology, management, culture, information, and city project. So the layers are kind of continuum where we study um, specific um, subjects connected with those layers, but the disciplines itself are changing from one semester to another. So for example, in technology, um, in the first semester, we are mostly working with the scale of things. So we are producing real prototypes of uh, gadgets, of robots, uh, of um, di re real technologies using digital fabrication. In the second semester in technology layer, we work with a um, layer of buildings and resources. And in the third uh, semester, we are working mostly with the urban communities and technologies for urban communities, uh, 
quite advanced technologies as uh, machine learning and neural networks. We produce applications for uh, citizens um, and many other things. In the layer of management, uh, we study new business models because it's quite important not just to know technology itself, but to know how to promote the technology economically and how to build the project, economical projects around this technology. We work uh, with the legal regulations of urban development in the second sem semester, which is quite intense course about uh, new regulations that we have around technologies and cities. You know that um, now we are living in a world where technologies are emerging quite fast. For example, uh, the technologies, driverless cars, uh, self-driving cars or drones, um, they became um, they became widespread not far like time ago just recently some years ago and for the moment many cities in the world they, they still don't have the legal regulations how to operate those technologies and for example in moscow uh, the drones are forbidden by law uh, to fly in the city which is quite ridiculous because this technology could solve many for example logistic challenges for the cities and during this course uh, we have amazing tutor we work with their regulations and our students even try to develop their own regulations for the newly introduced technologies also we work we work with the problem of data 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 sorry, <laughs> data privacy, um, and uh, which is quite important now uh, because we're working with information technologies. And uh, also we work with the impact analysis and actually in the third semester, we're trying to reflect on the topic, how those technologies that are being implemented by you in your projects in the city impact the urban, um, the urban environment itself. So with the layer of culture, we also have a bunch of quite interesting disciplines. In the first semester, we traditionally start with readings on urbanity course, which gives you an overall, I would say, uh, vision of different theories, how during the 20th and 21st century, urban planners and urban researchers looked at the city. We are reading a text, um, different texts, main texts in urban uh, studies. Uh, we study cases of urban regeneration in this subject and we have a quite hot debates and uh, discussions and actually during you, this course you increase your ability to make debates and to discuss a lot um, and to make argumentation so in the um, second semester in the cultural layer we work with the history of urbanism subject where we try to analyze how different visions of the urban future that were represented in the past, different kind of utopias influenced the urban thought and influenced the practitioners in urban field. And actually, in the end of this course, you even try to develop your own utopia of the future, imagining how the cities will look like in the future. This is quite philosophical and re reflective part of the program, but actually it helps you to develop the um, analytical skills, critical thinking and um, uh, like philosophical thinking. And in the third semester in cultural layer, we work with the city protocol subject discipline, which is actually a kind of um, comparison analysis. And usually we put one research question, for example, how uh, housing renovation projects were passing in different parts of the world. And we take cases from uh, Latin America, from Europe, from North America, from Asia, from Africa, and we check uh, on a specific methodology, how the one process, one like um, project, for example, housing renovation, were uh, organized in different parts of the world. And we try to outline the best practices, the worst practices. We try to outline institutional peculiarities of specific countries and specific cities and how they built um, different projects. Why we do this? Because um, um, uh, especially people uh, from Russia, but many people, but I I'm sure people from other parts of the world will agree as well that uh, quite often if we see some good practice in urban development or urban renovation, for example, somewhere in Europe or somewhere in, uh, I don't know, Singapore, for example, we try to implement it immediately in our own city, in our own environment. And at the end, we are not so successful because our environment is quite specific and without considering those specific uh, 
things connected with our own cities and our own environments, just copy past of the project will not succeed. And we try to reduce the risks of copy past of the projects um, and um, making this case analysis. In the informational layer, we have also three amazing subjects. Here, we mostly work with the big data and data analysis. In the first uh, two semesters, we have subjects as data-driven cities and data visualization, which gives them um, like quite intense overview how to work with data, how to extract data, how to interpret data, how to um, visualize data. In the second semester, you work with the recording sociology discipline, uh, which teaches you to look at the city with means of visual methods like uh, photo and video. So you are uh, taught to have a professional view on a city and to depict and to decipher specific problematic of urban environment in your photo or video materials that later you can use in your projects. And as you know, currently we are all living in a visual world without photos and without videos that can illustrate the problematic, that can illustrate your problem you will not be able to present any project. That's why we consider it's very, very important. And also we have an amazing uh, discipline which is called mapping economy, where you are uh, where you're experimenting with, uh, uh, with maps and how to visualize urban economy using maps, how again to work with this data. There you work with quite um, specific technologies, programming technologies as Python, R languages, so you also taught uh, those languages. And uh, one of the main layers of the master is the city project itself. And actually this layer incorporates all the other layers. So in city project, uh, we, from the side of the program, we set the specific scale inside of which you work every semester. For example, in first semester, you work with a scale of things and you produce the real objects for urban environments, real technologies. And you try to mix the knowledge and the skills that you got from technology, from management, from culture, from informational layer. In the second semester at City Project, you work on a scale of a building. So you produce a, a project for a building, not building itself. This is not pure architecture. This is more like a mix of everything. And in the third semester, you are working on a scale of a city and urban communities, and you produce a project group project uh, on um, um, for a wall city. And the last semester you are working with your own project, with your uh, graduation project. So I don't know if you see what I'm showing. Yeah, so I hope now you see. So here in the last semester you work with the graduation project, you have an internship, and actually some of our students go like uh, to different parts of the world uh, to make a, an internship. Um, mostly uh, many people stay also in Russia, we try to provide uh, the internship in different companies for different uh, backgrounds of students. So this is mostly uh, the curriculum itself. In case you have any question, please uh, put now in a chat uh, connected with the curriculum itself. And I will try to answer. I will not comment right now. I will go on, but uh, I will check. Um, I will check your questions later in case you have connected with the curriculum. Okay, so let's go. Uh, which are the main skills that you get during the program? We have the skill tree. Uh, you will get this presentation. That's why you will have time to reflect on this and to check carefully all the details of the presentation. But uh, these are the um, main skills that you get during the program, the main technical skills, I would say. Uh, and this, um, I would say, skill tree is not, um, is not complex. I mean, is not everything that you can learn inside of the program. We do not push students to learn specific, um, specific software or we do not push to learn specific uh, technological uh, uh, things. Uh, you have a set of skills, you have a set of um, uh, software that you can choose starting from quite basic ones, for example, as Photoshop and going to more advanced one, uh, ones as uh, Grasshopper and different uh, programming languages that you can learn inside of the program. So uh, as we have a quite small group of students, you always have a personalized uh, tra uh, trajectory of your education. So and you can choose it. Um, mostly we teach not only tech hard skills, which are 
quite, quite important for nowadays, but we also focus on soft skills. And uh, this is quite a big part of educational process. If we talk about hard skills, we work with the digital fabrication and you will have access to the laboratory resources where to show have lab resources where you can use all the digital fabrication equipment and uh, you will be in the, in the first right in the first semester you can test everything and produce whatever you want using this equipment um, like 3d printing and everything uh, you will also um, you, you will be also learn to use a computer aided design on different uh, on different kinds uh, you will be also working with the um, scanning projections and computer visions. For example, this is the photo from one of the students' project that we developed for Big Forum uh, of the virtual reality um, of one of the projects that we did. And uh, the soft skills uh, where you are always experimenting with public presentation, which is all very important for future leaders how to present your project and you will have an opportunity to have a speech different kinds of online events like webinars or offline events because we always organize a series of lectures we always organize an open presentations of the students projects to the broader audience so you will have the ability to test this skill uh, in a more like laboratory uh, environment. We also um, uh, develop critical writing and all the texts that our students uh, writing during the different courses we try to put online and you can even find them in, for example, Medium platform. Um, and you will have an opportunity to develop this skill. Strategical thinking and hands-on um, adaptability, multitasking. So problem solving. Our program is um, focused on the problem solving uh, approach to study. So you are not going from the contents and from the theory, but you are going from a problem. We always like um, put a problem that groups of students are trying to solve from different points of view. One of the parts of the program uh, quite interesting and quite, um, I would say, effective is the international field trip that we are doing regularly. Unfortunately, this year when we were not able to do it because of the world situation, but we will do it once all the uh, once we can do it. Uh, we did it to Barcelona and to Copenhagen with our students in the last years, and this was quite an amazing experience because we've met with the leading experts. Of, uh, of the world in uh, urban research and um, urban um, design. For example, here we had a meeting with Jan Gale, which is one of the leading uh, urban designers. Uh, we also organize inside of the laboratory uh, meetings with, uh, for example, chief architects. Here you can see the chief architect of Moscow, Sergei Kuznetsov. Uh, also, we organize uh, lectures with the leading global experts, for example, uh, like Carlo Ratti, who is the director of um, MIT Sensible City Lab, who gave a lecture, um, <clears throat> who gave a lecture to this uh, in Shukhov Lab to our students. So we also um, make excursions to the industry, to different uh, industrial objects, for example, to trash recycling plants, to transport infrastructure. Uh, to many offices of the companies, which are uh, possible employees for, for our students. Uh, we visit leading research centers, like for example in Copenhagen, we visit the Royal Academy of Fine Arts and had quite fruitful meetings there. We're visiting historical sites and research centers. So, um, one of the, I would say, most interesting parts of the program is that the students have the opportunity to not just visit, but to participate as a participants in the biggest uh, international forums and exhibitions. For example, this year we've participated in Shenzhen Architecture and Urbanism Biennale in China with our own research project. Uh, one of our students participated in the <clears throat> International Biodesign Challenge uh, and uh, she actually won one of the awards there and she presented her project in Parsons School of Design in New York uh, and this trip was uh, supported by the program. Uh, we also visited Smart City Expo in Barcelona with the students. Um, we participated in Museum of Moscow festivals in, uh, in uh, the Moscow Urban Forum um, and um, our students even had the opportunity to present their projects to the leading, I would say, uh, leaders of Russian cities, for example, to vice mayor of Moscow, 
uh, who are in charge of urban development and to the president of the Tatarstan Republic uh, at the Urban Forum last year. And uh, also another amazing part of the program is that you have an full access to the resources of the Laboratory for Experimental Urban Design, to Shukhov Lab. And uh, this is the space which you can use both as co-working, as a place for study, as a place for experiments. There you will have the access to different digital fabrication equipment that you can use openly for your projects. This space is also used for uh, for open lectures that we organize inside of the lab or for different workshop, collaborative workshops. Um, and if even uh, we are constructing, they are quite big structures inside of the lab. So this is it. Uh, and uh, here we start to talk about the scholarships. Uh, and before we go there, please um, ask any question about the program at the moment. If you have any, I'm ready to answer. Everything is clear. Okay, uh, we also, I guess we had some, just a second, I will open the chat. Uh, we had a question from Yaroslav. Guys, can you comment whether we can get a full scholarship if we win this competition? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, this is a good question. Uh, this scholarship covers uh, half in case you win and in case you are in the top 10 of the uh, of the winners of this competition, it covers part of the tuition fee. For example, for the first places, it will be 50% of uh, tuition fee that covers this exact scholarship, and um, which is quite a lot. And um, um, with the other part, the program becomes even more affordable. Uh, for the second and third uh, places, it, who wins the scholarship, it covers 30 and 20% of I hope I answered your question. So we have here also Sarah uh, working in telecommunication. Could you tell me what will give me more chance to win scholarship for data science master program? I'm sorry, I have no idea about data science master program. I'm all only in charge of cities. So uh, in case you're interested in data science, you should go to the to this program webpage probably and ask them directly. So, Yaroslav, how do international students with Russian diploma apply? Uh, what do you mean, international students with Russian diploma? This is interesting. Um, I uh, I think that you just apply, like, we have, uh, I would say we have the um, one, um, one channel of application you should go to the HEC online system you can find it at our website there is a specific uh, window that is called apply you go there and you will be inside of the online system of application you just uh, fill everything like your personal data and you upload all the docu documents that are required um, for to apply for the program and that's it uh, you are currently studying at uh, St. Petersburg, but you're originally from Moldova, for example. Yeah, uh, actually everything is uh, the same. Then you should apply as an international student. For you, it will be easier to, um, for example, you don't need to translate your diploma, to make apostilles of your diploma. From this um, point of view, this is much easier for you. But being an international citizen, you should apply now uh, together with all the international students and uh, we will help you in case you will be enrolled we will help you with all the visa issues in case you need it with registration issues and all of this um, will the program be offering full scholarship in the future in this year in 2020 no okay thanks so let's go in case there are no more questions let's go to what we have and um, this is the um, uh, global scholarship competition website uh, in case you haven't uh, visited it yet visit it please uh, here you can see in below uh, the link shukhovlab.hc.ru pvc gsc thank you valeria for providing the link and i have a question to you are you already registered to this competition or not 
because it will help me to understand uh, with whom we're talking like specifically about the competition itself or should I uh, explain like broader what is it and uh, please put those who are registered yes, those who are not registered no. So Nina, in case you haven't uh, registered, you should do it. Sarah, Vika as well, in case you're not registered, but you are interested to get this scholarship, please register it. Okay. Okay, so I see that most of the people are registered. Good. Those who are not, go to the website that Valeria gave uh, earlier and to register. The registration form is very simple. So let's go. The prizes are, uh, the first place gets a 50% discount on tuition fee, uh, second place 30% of discount of tuition fee, and third place 20% discount of tuition fee for the whole, uh, two year, for the two years of study. So this is the main things, this is the main thing, and this is the main prizes that you can get uh, from, from the competition itself. So the main deadlines are, on 21st of April, it means this Saturday already, you will get uh, to your personal emails that you put in the application form, uh, detailed instructions what to do and uh, how to proceed with the um, competition itself. Very important, in case you do not get, do not receive an email on 20. Uh, 5th of April, please check your spam box because sometimes it goes to spam. Please check it carefully. In case you still didn't get anything from us, please email us. Uh, Lera, I would ask, I would like to ask you to provide email uh, where guys can contact us. So the competition itself start on 26th of April. This is the Sunday and 10 a.m. Moscow time. Uh, it's important to note that this competition will last for 20 it means that no matter where you are in the world, in which time zone, you can start any time you want. You, for example, in case you are from, I don't know, from Asia, and in your country, in your location, 10 a.m. in the morning, it's late evening, uh, you sh you can start like in the next morning. You, you, you don't have to start immediately. The same people from Mexico, for example, uh, this will be late night um, for you. You can sleep carefully, like wake up um, at your time, like 9 a.m. in the morning and start doing the competition. So be more relaxed. Don't do it like once you receive it. So for those who are living closer to Moscow, it will be, uh, it, it has sense to start once you get this email. So, and the competition finished on 27th of April and 10 a.m. Moscow time. Yeah, thank you, Valeria, for providing the email. So uh, now let's go, uh, let's discuss the tasks itself. And this is our main goal for today webinar, because I would like to represent, to present you demo version of the uh, competition. The tasks that we are going to discuss now, they will be very similar to those that you will have at the competition itself, but not the same. So, but uh, what we discussed today will help you to understand what you should do and which is the strategy to, uh, to complete the tasks. The main thing here is that you don't have to actually prepare because to the most of the questions uh, and most of the tasks there are no correct answers uh, mostly we're trying to see how you work with information how you analyze information and how you represent your thoughts and ideas that's why it's more about your background, your experience, about uh, the way how you share in texts and images and videos your ideas. So uh, I would say that you don't have specifically to prepare, to prepare for this competition. So there will be four tasks uh, and each task will count 25 scores. So in general, you can get 100 scores for the whole uh, com um, Oh no, sorry, you, you will not, you will get uh, 50 scores for the whole um, competition. Why? Because uh, the task number one, uh, urban data analysis, 
will be compulsory is it means that you have to do this you cannot choose it you just see it and you do it from the rest of the task from task number one to uh, from task number two three and four you should choose one which mostly suits to your experience and that is more interesting for you I would say and to do it so in general you have to complete only two tasks one uh, which is urban data analysis like compulsory and the second you choose from three options and in general in maximum you can get 50 scores uh, for completing those two tasks so this is it I hope this is clear now we are going to discuss every of the tasks uh, urban data analysis task number one, uh, task number two, observation is method of research, task number three, case research and analysis, and task number four, project conceptualization. Let's check what we have. So you will get, um, uh, during the competition, you will get the file with a description of every task, um, and mostly it will look something like this. You will have the um, task, for example, number one, objective, description, formats of results, uh, and task scope. So in urban data analysis, you will work with maps and trying to analyze and interpret, interpret maps. Because in the program or even in your future career as an urban uh, researcher, urban leader, urban design, anyway, you are going to work with data and you are going to work with maps probably, like 99%. That's why it's very important to start, even if you haven't worked with maps before, you will be able to complete this task. Uh, it checks the basic, uh, the basic understanding of information and how you can look at what you see and interpret it. For example, uh, in the case, in this demo version, uh, we prepared for you maps of Kazan city, which is one of the quite big cities in Russia. And uh, you will have to analyze those maps and uh, try to answer in text to the following questions, uh, which you see, I will show now with this one. Yeah, which you see in this section task description. So uh, you should analyze provided maps, find connections between maps. Um, you can use any source you want. You can use internet, whatever you need and whatever you want, and answer the following que questions. If the social infrastructure well developed in the city, state the reason if not and if yes. How accessible is social infrastructure? state the reason for the uneven development of social infrastructure and what are the most problematic areas of social infrastructure you can identify with help of those maps the maps will look like this here are the maps in scale we will provide you in a scale you can zoom in you can do whatever you want with them uh, and here you can see the maps connected with um, i will even put it larger like this hope you will see it so, for example, cultural infrastructure, density, medicine infrastructure, sport infrastructure. So you, you will have those maps, but for a different city. Kazan we give for, as a demo version. So don't um, try to learn about Kazan as much as possible. In the competition version, you, you will have another city, but the task itself will be the same. And you will have to uh, compare those maps and try to find the problematics in social infrastructure. For example, how you can uh, check it. So I will try if I can, no, I, I cannot. I will put the normal uh, scale. For example, this map uh, is a density map and you can see where mostly people located in Kazan, yeah? This map is cultural infrastructure and what you can see here that or the cultural infrastructure is mostly located in a city center here that I'm showing right now on a screen uh, in the bank of the river. And, but people live mostly in a different part of a city. It means that this part of the city is not covered by the cultural infrastructure. And you can put it as one of the problems and tr try to interpret it and uh, say why uh, maybe more cultural infrastructure should be added there, like uh, what should be added, uh, what, which specific uh, cultural activities should be added because you will have a list of existing activities, yeah. 
So also you have here medicine infrastructure and also you have, oh my God, I cannot see because my picture, uh, what is here. So you compare those maps and you uh, answer the questions that you've seen on the previous slide. Like, is the social infrastructure well developed in the city? Like, try to think well or not, in your opinion, uh, using the maps that you were provided. How accessible is the social infrastructure for, for the citizens? Like you say, it's accessible and try to interpret why and how. If, if it's not accessible from your point of view, also try to provide a broader answer why. So this is a quite, I would say, uh, analytical task. There are no, again, correct answers. So try to be argumentative and try to uh, try to analyze maps from your point of view. Uh, okay. The evaluation criteria for these tasks uh, will be uh, like this. So uh, first, you should really identify a prob social uh, problem from the ma uh, maps. Then uh, use, you should assess the social infrastructure uh, and to provide why it's problematic or why, why it's not. Then to find um, detailed analysis on the maps and uh, to provide extra information from open sources. Yeah, so you can use any source that you want. For example, in the real version of the competition, you will have an international city, uh, which will be um, a lot of information in English. I suppose that about Kazan, mostly the information are in Russian, uh, but in the real version, you will have an international city where you can find information in English. So, and you will have to read this kind of uh, analytical piece of text with uh, 600 words in maximum and three words, 300 words in minimum, uh, which will accompany those maps as your analytical report. So very important, please do not use the text from others, from the open sources, no plagiarism. We check it. We have a specific software where we put all your works and we check the plagiarism. In case you use someone's words and you would like to use someone's citations to argumentate your work, put it in a, in a correct order and put from where is this phrase or information. Uh, so this is very important. Uh, the second task, and here you already can choose from task two, three and four, you can choose one and do it. And you, I would recommend you to choose the task which um, it's not showing the map. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we will send you these tasks and at home you can learn everything in a relaxed way and you will, can check all the maps. So the task number two uh, will be the observation as a method of research. And here we would like to see your opinion and your uh, vision of a city, of your own city, of the place where you live. Uh, uh, and your, I would say, vision on specific scope. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, you will be given a specific scope of the problem. For example, in demo version, uh, you have microeconomy and public spaces. In the real version, you, you will have another set of uh, task scope here. And you should make a video or photo report how you see this problematic in your city, the problematic of microeconomy, how the microeconomy is represented in your city, how public space problems are represented in your city. And here you should, uh, we, uh, we would like to see not text as in the previous task, but more visual information. And formats of results would be five photos that represents one of selected problems. So you can select one problem, microeconomy or public spaces, in, in the real task will be too, dif uh, too different to these problems. And you go to the street and you make photos on you make, or you make videos that represent this problematic. So uh, here I would like to ask how many of you are now in the quarantine mode and you have to stay at home? How many of you cannot go out at the streets? Who can go out and who cannot? Please comment in chat because it's very important for this task and we should understand if you are able to do it uh, in a format like really going and doing pictures or you cannot. Yeah, mostly you cannot. <laughs> yeah, 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 this is okay. Well, happy you are, you can go, yeah. So, okay, uh, I can't, we're on lockdown, yeah, yeah, so 
we are as well i'm at my home now so that's why we prepared a specific um okay can from 6 a.m to 6 p.m amazing can't maybe we maps yeah so this is why we prepared a specific uh, way how to deal with this task of, of course that would be great if you can go out during this 24 hours and look at your city and study with your phone you can use your phone or phone of your friends if if you if you think that it's better to study the city of or you can use a photo camera if you have any and um Mm, but most of us we can't go that's why uh, there is an option you can use google maps and google view you know this i hope that you know this uh, option of google maps when you can go to even to your city and uh, to use uh, to, to extract photos from there so you can use these resources and uh, to um, analyze this problem and to provide your view your vision of this problematic in your city in case you live in a city without google view it's also possible sometimes it happens you can use any city that maybe you know or that you find interesting and try to analyze it so it's quite open to you but uh, the main thing is that you should provide a story visual story in photos or in videos the format you choose by yourself which reflects on the specific problematic that will be given to you to macroeconomy or public space problematic in your city okay so uh and the criteria here will be uh so that videos or photos or screenshots uh, that they should represent the problematic the city problem should be detailed in the video photos and screenshots so you can use any creative um, like ideas to how to represent the information city problematic should be related to selected problem it means that in case you choose a public uh, space problematic your visual uh, materials should be in accordance with this topic and there are some requirements to the photos in general this is not uh, i would so severe so you can this is quite um, soft uh, the photos should be in high quality in case you don't have a camera in high quality this is okay use what you have <laughs> and provide um, images and videos as you see it because here the most important is the creative way of presentation information and um, your i would say professional or semi-professional view of the city even you if you are not urban planner try to see the city as an urban planner T try to uh, see specific problematics and uh, uh, represent them in uh, photos and videos again no plagiarism here this is totally your work um, in a, in case with screenshots of course we understand that this is a google view and nothing can be done there you just provide the, the link um, that you took it from google maps on google view but in case you provide photos on videos it should be done by you um, not uh, from any other people so this is it any question here so we've discussed two tasks uh, if there are any questions can we use maps from other studies yes you can uh, use maps from other. what do you mean sorry i didn't get you talk about second task or about first task Uh, if you use maps yes you can use actually you can use whatever you want but you should put all the copyrights and in case you use uh, some others photos to illustrate your idea put the copyright please from where you took it uh, link to this source and in case this is maps yeah this is great but mostly here uh, is about photo and video and not the maps themselves but uh, because we would like to see how you see the, see the problematic uh, itself not on a level of maps but on a level of objects and environment itself but yes you can use it okay task number three so here again you can choose from task number two three or four one of them for those who are more um, who don't like the visual representations who are not maybe uh, feel confident in producing photos or videos uh, video materials uh, we develop the tasks for case analysis and uh, actually here you will uh, you will be given uh, again to choose 
uh, different theories. For example, in, in the demo version, you have a smart city and regenerative design theories. And uh, you should, uh, um, I would say, make an analysis in open source. Again, it means in the internet, in the books that you have uh, uh, about those theories and uh, write a short uh, document, text document with the illustrations that you can find in the, in, the internet, in the internet. For example, in the demo version, it's called implementation urban theory um, in a new or best way through personal devices. What does it mean? For example, you have a smart city theory and I think we are going to provide you with quite uh, known theories and quite known uh, concepts of urban development and you um, answer the question through the lens of this theory. Uh, you should uh, mention the main positions of the theory, for example, smart city consists, uh, uh, there is uh, an opinion that smart city is this, and as opinion says that smart city is this, and if I would like to develop a, a specific case through the lens of smart city, I would do it on a several steps, and, and you do it. So you will, pro you will be provided quite detailed task description, so uh, here it is, uh, just a second, I will use my again arrow, here it is. So study the theory provided, uh, identify the key components, find three projects that support this theory or three projects that were done inside, for example, of a smart city concept and describes in a short uh, essay key points of this theory uh, and uh, why exactly these devices offer something new for the uh, theory or support it in a new way. So this is more about like case analysis inside of specific theories. So uh, we should be finishing. That's why I will go in really fast because at six o'clock there is another webinar of another program. So the third uh, task is um, evaluation criteria is the following. Again, no plagiarism uh, um, and uh, we will send you the presentation, you will check it. I will not repeat myself. So, and the last one uh, also that you can um, choose, this is the project conceptualization. And uh, here in the task description, again, you have the detailed description of what is required. Uh, you should choose one of the provided prototypes. The prototypes will be provided in a task scope. And imagine that you develop the prototype during your study. So, and how this prototype can transform the urban environment in 10 years. So, uh, you will have a link. You go to this link, you see a project, and you try to uh, speculate how this project, uh, this specific device, this specific prototype will change the urban environment in the next two years. And you should be answering the following questions. How this prototype influenced social relations, city economy and ecology. And again, the format of results. Uh, this is a short essay. Uh, this is it. Uh, evaluation criteria you will check uh, once we send the presentation. And um, for those people who will be in the top of the list, uh, you will also have an interview with the academic supervisor. This is the task not for everyone, but for those who will be in the top. So, uh, my one of the last slides, uh, what I would recommend you to do uh, first of all, check your email on 21st of April. We will find, uh, you will find and their link to specific system where you will be uploading your works. Um, plan your time, don't panic. You will have enough time to do both of the tasks. Uh, choose from tasks number two, three, and four, the task that fits your personal Please uh, write your questions in the chat. We have only three minutes <laughs> to do this. So when and why would the interviews take place? What do you mean, uh, why? <laughs> why? Because this is 6th to 10th of May. Um, 
when and why would the interviews take place? Why? Yeah, because this is the part of the competition. In case I didn't get correct your question, so maybe you can write in more details. Today is 21st April and I didn't receive any email from PVC. Uh, you mean the email about the competition or you mean email about other questions? Uh, have you applied for program and you didn't uh, receive any um, information? Those who didn't receive any email from us, please check spam because uh, unfortunately we do emailings to many people. For the moment we have around uh, 200 people registered for the competition and sometimes in some moment, moments it goes to spam. In case you didn't get, please um, uh, please check your spam box. Also Valeria provided the email that you can use in case you have any extra questions and check it on 20, 25th of April on Saturday we will uh, send an, an email to everyone who is registered to the competition please check your emailing box and your spam uh, Zain you have a question about, about uh, can we apply to this scholarship or do we have to get enrolled first uh, you should participate in the scholarship uh, first so in case you will get the scholarship you will also be be enrolled to this program uh, what would the interviews entail i mean uh, with what will be the question so what but uh, the interviews will be in uh, online mode and you will be mostly asked about, uh, asked about how you completed the task. We do the interviews to check that this task was done by you. So we will uh, ask the questions uh, that will um, like uh, push you to think about the tasks and that will show that this is exactly you who did it or not someone else because in case this was not done by you, you will not be able to answer those questions. Uh, Sarah, okay, um, but I don't know about which email you are talking about. Uh, we will make emailing on 21st, 25th of April. So uh, if, if you're talking about specific email, let us know. Pavan haven't received any login credentials or confirmation because we didn't uh, provide it yet. We will do it during this week uh, before 25th of April. Yeah, on 25th of April, every one of you who are interested to participate, check the uh, email itself, your, your email and your spam box. Okay, so we should be uh, should be disconnected in one uh, moment. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, you have our contacts, uh, email, please email us in case uh, you have any question. I really hope that all of you who were today at the webinar will participate. Uh, the main thing is uh, even if the tasks at the moment seems for you unclear or maybe difficult or challenging, do it because you know other people think the same <laughs> and other people uh, has worries the same worries as you and maybe you will be the best and maybe you will be the person who will get uh, the best feedbacks from the experts and uh, the 